सो कैन यू टेल मी वॉट इज वॉट इज कंटिन्यूस इंटीग्रेशन okay continuous integration is like uh, when we deploy our code uh, you know uh, to an environment so it should be automatically you know move to the different stages uh, like from if you are uh, creating the build then it has to be passed to the dev server and then from uh, dev to stage or to production so this pipeline needs to be created so for that purpose uh, cicd uh, configuration has to, has to be done okay so whenever we make a push so if the configuration we have to do like it will if everything is uh, successfully if the, all the test cases runs then and everything is fine then it will be automatically deployed to the servers uh can you tell me uh, what is the difference between docker image and a container uh, docker image and a... so i think uh, container is the main uh, you know uh, object which is uh, going to hold uh you know that that gives the environment and uh, image is like whatever we have created the project image uh, you know the, the var or uh, the uh, you know uh, uh, associated uh, files which we are uh, creating so that entire package is called as image which has to be moved to the different container so for we have dev container stage container and production so the we create a snapshot of it uh, entire image and then we move it to these containers uh, microservice Architect. Okay, so our uh, our project is more uh, is is like a service oriented architecture. Okay. So I would say not say like it's a pure monolith or a pure microservice. It's a mix of uh, both things. So how our project works is like we have three different uh, four different applications, and they are deployed in uh, they in itself they are monolith, and but they are deployed in different servers. So one is a uh, web server, one is a uh, Elastic Search project is there. So that is deployed as a separate uh, you know uh, separate project. then we have metadata service project that's a different project itself and all these four applications are intercommunicating uh, using the rest apis so we don't have a, a microservices a registry kind of thing but uh, i would say it's a service oriented architecture so everyone is talking to each other using apis okay so in which scenario you will uh, you'll go for monolith architecture over microservice architecture okay so monolith uh, is basically i mean if your application is uh, small and uh, self sufficient i mean it is not uh, depending a lot on uh, you know other services in, and it is easily manageable maintainable then it is better to go with the monolith but if a project is having multiple modules and uh, there is a rapid development in uh, each of the you know modules so if we go with the monolith application then every time we will have to you know uh, Uh, do the deployments for the entire project itself though the small change will not be uh, having any impact to the entire project but still we will have to do the deployments so in that places in in such scenarios we will go with the microservices approach i mean we will divide the entire application into different different sections and uh, uh, so that gives us a uh, flexibility there so only one particular section can be you know uh, deployed if we have to do some changes there okay okay fine uh so coming to uh, like new features of java 8 yes uh can i uh, do you know anything about functional interface uh yes so okay. Okay. prior to java 8 till java 7 the entire uh, concept of java was revolving around object oriented concepts but uh, that was not helping us to define some met- i mean you know a functionality uh only in itself i mean every time we will have to create an object then do some operations kind of thing so what java 8 come uh, came with was a functional interface using this i mean we create the lambda expressions and it reduces a lot of uh, you know boilerplate well kind of code and it is uh, you know easy to implement a lot of things so for that purpose the lambda expression came and using lambda expressions uh we have i mean implement the stream uh, solution also so using streams also the collection processing became very faster and easier okay uh, with that yeah so can you create your own functional interface uh yes we can create uh, we have to just uh, declare at the right functional interface at uh, top of it i mean we have to give that stream to type annotation and uh, but the condition is that uh, only one abstract method should be there and uh, yeah so if we can do that then it will create a functional interface okay so uh, that means can a functional interface can extend another interface is that possible uh functional interface can extend another 
or interface inherit or extend anything mm itself uh i think no i mean we cannot inherit i mean functional interface can be inherited by other classes i would say but uh, in itself he is not going to inherit from anybody else okay and why uh because they might be you know uh there should be only one uh, abstract method here but if let's say it is going to extend uh, from other other interface so it, it will be having to uh, you know from the parent one also and it can have it uh, its own uh, uh, it will have its own one also so there there uh, a confusion might uh, be created for the J- jvm to understand among I mean, how can two uh, functions be available in one uh, functional interface okay so see in java if there is no in, uh, i would say i mean if there is no uh, abstract method given in a you know in the child one then i guess it it should work it can extend but if the child is having uh, exit in its own if it is having a, a, a you know abstract method then i think it won't uh, allow it will okay. give some compilation error kind of thing okay yeah so uh, there are in, in uh, java it there are uh, static methods as well in interfaces uh yes so what is the use of those static methods i mean why it was uh, there in the okay so i mean to give some concrete definition uh, default methods were there but the thing is like i mean uh, these default methods uh will also be available in the implementing classes so let's say there is some security related uh, you know functionality which has been which has to be implemented for that particular uh, interface so if it is being defined in the uh, default methods then it is accessible to the all the implementing classes but let's say there are some conditions where uh, we don't want the implementing class to you know use that uh, concrete uh, definition in that particular case we will uh, go with the static one so the static methods are not available in the you know uh, implementing classes so in a way it will give a security kind of thing like so uh, a kind of abstraction only for the implementing classes can't have access to static method static method of uh, functional interfaces yeah yeah so in a way it will uh, give a i mean uh, kind of security kind of thing if we want to access that we will have to use the interface reference itself i mean that Uh, the parent interface the functional interface reference itself to access the static method okay. the child will both be able to access that and uh, these default methods are also introduced in java 8 right yes yes okay so suppose two interfaces have uh, same default method i mean they have same name same uh, content everything and okay. uh, uh, one class which is implementing both these interfaces want to yes. use a certain method a, a, a method of interface a okay 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 so how do you use that i mean everything is same the interface uh, okay so uh, same content is also same okay so same signature same content everything will yeah, be everything. same and It both is. are defaults for for both each uh, functional interface yeah okay uh so i think in the uh, child class i mean uh, we have to define i mean which particular uh, um, default method has to be given the preference i mean uh, there is a way to uh, you know mention that so i don't remember exactly how we can do that but there is a, a feature uh, which is being provided by java it which allow us to mention i mean which one has to be given the priority in both the out of the interface a and interface b method so we can give that priority we can set that somewhere priority is that possible no i will not say priority, priority but uh, we can define somewhere in the uh, child uh, the extending class like which particular method we have to consume i mean the default one if, if if both the parents are having a default method then which one we have to use so that can be defined in the child class somewhere i am not sure exactly where but it can be defined okay okay fine so coming to uh 
so uh, there is one more feature called lambda expressions yes okay so what are these lambda expression and how does a lambda expression relate to a function interface okay so lambda i would say it's nothing uh, but you know uh, a way to uh, call the functional interface so whatever implementation in the lambda uh, in the function interface we are not going to define any you know uh, the functionality of it we are just going to declare what the method would be and how to pass the functionality that is through lambda expression using lambda we will provide the actual you know uh, definition of that method during run time itself so we are not giving a fixed definition in a, let's say we have a, a functional interface as sample and in that we have uh, two variables int a and b okay and so inside that we are not we are just saying like uh, uh, let's say the method name is operation so what that operation method has to do that is not something we will be predefining that is something we will be providing during run i mean you know during implementing it and that functionality has to be introduced into the uh, functional interface using lambda so lambda provides us the capability that we can introduce the functionality into the interface using using that okay so that operation could be addition or subtraction or uh, multiplication or division so that is not predefined so whatever we want to do with those two variables that we can pass the functionality okay okay so there is one more class which is optional class yes okay. so so hmm, what is yeah. the advantage of using i mean using the method of optional class or using optional class in general uh, okay so basically optional is used to handle the i mean whatever i know with that limited knowledge i'm saying so i don't know what all purposes they are but one thing one benefit it gives is uh, we can handle the null pointers in a better way so wherever earlier let's say uh, we are consuming a uh, you know member of a uh, variable object which is already null so and if we are trying to perform some operation let's say we are doing multiplication or uh, subtraction there or adding some content so at the time will it will throw a null pointer exception so and we have to make try catch block and you know do a lot of stuff so instead of that we can use an optional so it will return a optional object and we can check in optional object whether the value is present or not if it is present then we'll perform the operation otherwise we can you know there's a method one more method is there uh, which will where we can define what uh, should be the output in case the data is null so that that sort of thing so that that helps in you know handling null pointers there so okay yeah okay so there are method uh, there is a method called find first yes and there is a method called find any yes so what is the difference so find first is like let's say you have a list okay a list of string is there uh, alphabets are available in that so you want to uh, uh, find first will be like if it is available in n n and first uh, the first entry then it will, uh, sorry oh, sorry okay uh, let me rethink once um, first okay so in find first we are specifying a particular uh, you know object which has to be uh, checked in that particular list if it is available uh, then it will return it and find any is like we are not giving any uh, input to it uh, we are just checking whether the list is having any value associated with the condition or not if it if, if the condition satisfied as any value is there then that will be given back in find any and in find first the specific uh, whatever we are passing to that method if that is available and it is uh, you know uh, occurred in that list then uh, that will return i guess Okay. the value the position of it value so how this uh, stream is different from collection collection stream is different from collection i mean uh, i would say it is a kind of uh, wrapper only I mean, on top of uh, collection framework only we have uh, created this streams so it is uh, more like of uh, let's say observer subscriber kind of pattern is there like uh, uh 
every object within that list will be you know uh, passed simultaneously and uh, multiple operations can be done you know uh, at a time so how can i explain it no, no. okay okay no problem sorry i'm i don't know how to technically explain it but yeah but uh, uh, the stream don't store any values yes i mean it's a kind kind of conveyor belt kind of thing so data is passing we perform operation once that operation yeah. is done then we are trying to collect it in you know and store it in some collection yeah correct yes okay okay so there are two methods in object class which is uh, i mean there are multiple but uh, one is hash code and equals okay uh, the other one is equals so uh in your code if suppose you i mean if uh, you uh, you have a condition that uh, you can't override hash code method okay so okay. what are the performance implications in that scenario okay we don't have to uh, override the, hash override code with the hash code <laughs> so performance implication is like uh, one i would say uh, in map it might uh, effect when if we are trying to store that uh, if we are uh, using that uh, object as a key in uh, a map so it is always better to have a unique uh, hash code every time for each for custom objects so if that ability is being you know restricted then that will create a problem in map i yes uh, and for comparison so i mean it will create problem you know, for implementing some comparison logics i mean it will uh, restrict the ability of a object to be unique so if if you are uh, uh, okay so i would say i mean it will effect in map i would say i mean or storing key as a key okay fine so uh, can you use uh, hash map in multi threaded environment uh, hash map in multi thread environments yeah actually by default they are not uh, thread safe but if if there is a condition of multi thread i mean uh, i think there is a we can make that uh, uh, map a synchronized one I mean, there are options i'm not sure how we can do it but i think we can make a map as a synchronized one so that only one thread is able to access the... uh you you mean you can use concurrent hash map yes 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 right okay okay so uh, the what is immutable uh, class or object okay immutability is like uh, once created we cannot update it again with uh, you know with another value so best example is string so java people have made uh, string immutable so we cannot update the value whenever we are trying to update on a value a copy of i mean a new instance will be created of it with a new space allocated okay 